to be known that God is my everything. God is all that I need. I want it to be clear and understood that as long as I have God on my side, he's all that I need. Is there anybody that can testify that God is your everything? God is your all in all. Yes, he is. He truly, he truly is. He truly is our everything. We bless him for being a God that needs no assistance of any other. We bless him, Zion, for being a God that changes it not. Bible says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, from everlasting to everlasting, he is, he's God. We bless, we bless him for that in him being God. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, VOP, for bearing with me. I know I kind of cut y'all off and threw a, threw a curveball at y'all this morning, but y'all found to be ready. Amen? You know, like I, like I said in the opening, we often... We often ascribe our worship to, to singing and song. But I'm looking at people that I know without a shadow of a doubt love God. I know I'm looking at people that love God and can worship him without an without a instrument. I know I'm looking at people that can worship God without a praise team or without a choir. I know I'm looking at people that love God and they say, God, when there's no words to be sung, when there's no songs to be sung, if I don't have the ability to, to say a word, I'll just wave my hand. And that should be testimony. That should be proof. That should be evident of my worship. Being for real, God. I know y'all love him. I know y'all love him. We bless him. We bless him. Before, y'all already know what we're going to talk about, but before we talk about choices, can we just make a choice while we have the chance? Ooh, that's good. Just make a choice while you have a chance to make the choice. Let's make a choice to give him our very best. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Come on, join in with me. Make a choice while you have a chance. Make the choice while you got breath in your body to give him the highest praise. Yeah, we take chances. We take chances for granted. You didn't know before you got in that car, before you got in that vehicle, if that was going to be your last chance. You didn't know if before you fixed yourself in Mount Zion and set yourself on that bench that you thought was going to hold you up, if that was going to be your last chance. But come on, Zion, make the choice with me this morning while you got chance to give him the very best. Yeah. God, we bless you. God, we bless you. 
Minister Solomon was saying in Sunday school how when we get to heaven, all we're going to do is sing and shout. But I've told you before, what you do here is a rehearsal of what you are going to do up there. No time for anything else. That's why the psalmist says, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will bless you, God. I will lift you, God. I will exalt you, God. I will magnify you, God. I will extol you, God. At all times. All times. God, you know what? I thank you for not letting praise be able to leave my mouth. I thank you, God, for the inability for not letting praise leave me. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Who made that choice? Who made that choice this morning? Wave, wave your hand at me if you made that choice. Why you got chance? Yeah, yeah, we made, we, made, we made a good choice. We made a good choice. We are going to, we're going to get into our, to our word. Luke 5, Luke 5, Luke 5. One verse, one verse this morning. Now that don't mean because there's one verse that we're going to read. That doesn't mean that we don't have a lot to unpack. Amen. Luke 5 verse 11. Luke 5 verse 11 for your reading. For your reading and then we'll rest. Then we'll rest. Luke 5 and verse 11 in the word of the Lord says, and when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Look at all the choices in that. When they had brought their ships to land, they made a choice to bring their ship to land. They made a choice from uh, to going from labor and working in the business of their craft, their profession, their vocation, and they decided to give up because they had caught nothing. The Bible says they made a choice to forsake all. And then they made a choice to follow him. You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be seated. We are, we are going into part three. Part three of our message. Part three of our message. Communicating your choices. Communicating your choices. Choices, my brothers and sisters, this morning are the ability to make decisions when presented with more than one option. I say choices are the ability to make decisions when presented with more options. Amen? We talked about choices, haven't we? But, but what, I want you to, what I want you to see is, what I want you to see is, as we go forth, as we make it to our conclusion, of communicating our choices, I wanted to be clear and I wanted to be evident for you this morning that life is all about choices. Say it with me. Life is all about, oh, y'all good. Y'all good. Y'all not going to do me wrong this morning, huh? Please don't do me wrong. Can you talk back to me and say, my life it's about choices. Oh, y'all good. Y'all good. That's a good birthday gift. Y'all about to give pastor. Life, life gives us, life gives us, I want you to watch it. I want you to watch it. Life gives us many options, but God gives us one choice. <laughs> we, can, we, we, we can finish right there. I said life gives us many options, but God gives us one choice. We looked at it in the embarkment of 
uh, uh, of this series where we went to Deuteronomy 30, 15, and 16, where it said in verse 15, See, I have set before thee life, this day life and good, death and evil. In that 16th verse, it says, In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God. Life is full of options, but God gives us one choice. We see it before us. He said, the choice is to love me, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and judgments. Verse 17 says to us, uh, I'm sorry, verse 19 says that I call heaven and earth to record this day against thee that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, forget about all them options. Choose life that both you and thy seed may live. Y'all remember that? That thou mayest love the Lord and thou mayest obey his voice and thou mayest cleave to him for he is life in the length of thy days. As, as we look at, as we look at, uh, communicating our choices, I found this concept, I found this theory uh, called the psychology of choice, where it talks, uh, Tavian, about why we make the decisions that we do. The psychology of, psychology of choice talks about the motivation, the, the momentum behind the choices that we make. Watch it, Trudy. Come here, Tavian. He made a choice. Took it. You remember what I did you, right? Called him out, asked him to stop. He stopped. Asked him to keep going. He made a choice to keep going. Right? That was me speaking. We transitioned from speaking now to talking about our choices. Amen? Follow me, Tavian. He made a choice to get up and come here. He doesn't know what I want him for. Ooh, I'm in it already. You watch me, Trudy? He, he does not know what I want him for. But Lord, as I've called him to get up, he got up. Greer, as I've called him to come to me, he does not know what I want. But I'm going to ask him now without him knowing what he will do or what I want him to do to follow me. He don't know. I want the camera to get you, so follow me. <laughs> do what I do. Can, can you do what I do? Yeah, there you go. Can you, can you follow me? Wherever I take you, you sure? You're positive. All right. He's following me, isn't he? He's going with me, isn't he? He made the choice to be obedient. This is good. We are almost ready to get up out of here. He's making the choice to follow me, not knowing where I am taking him, but he's following. You're a good follower. You're an obedient follower. Amen? You may be seated. What drove him? Think about where I left you, the psychology of choice. What drove him? What made him make the decision to get up and follow me? He didn't know if I was going to take him somewhere and do something to him. But his obedience, his trust, his faith, his belief caused him to make a move. What were your faith? What were your trust? What were your hope cause you to do? Now, we, we look at the text. We look at the text, and the Bible said that they dropped everything. This ain't about bait. This is about belief. See, see, see a lot of you, a lot of you think God is trying to bait you in. God has no gimmicks. God has no schemes. God has no strategy to bait you in. God simply wants you to believe. 
that everywhere he's going to take you, anywhere he's going to bring you, you'll follow him. Is it good? What drives you? What motivates you? What was your momentum to get up this morning, put clothes on your body, fix yourself up to come here today? What was your motivation? What pushes you? Now, I'm not asking, or I'm not going to give you an answer because I don't know. I know what got me up. I know what pushed me out of the house. I know what my momentum was. And that was that if I made the choice to follow him, I know without a shadow of a doubt Because his word says that it gives life to me and my seed. Amen? So so as we we transition into the text, I want you to take, I'm not going to take too much time, but I want you to to be alert. As, As the young folks say, stay woke. I want you to stay woke, not physically, but spiritually. Tell God I'm awakened. God, I am woke to what you are showing and what you are saying. The Bible shows us, if you go back to Luke 5 and 1, go to Luke 5 and 1, and the Bible shows us that there were two boats, are you with me? Are you woke? That were on the shore of the lake Gisenerate. Two boats that at one time had been full. But the Bible says that they are now empty because the fishermen were gone out of them. I want you to stay woke. What area in your life was one time full, but it's now empty? Maybe it's empty because of failure. Maybe it's empty because of frustration. Maybe it's empty because of fear. Now, Pastor, you say, where where does that come from? It comes from out of the text. Because they got out of the boat because they had been fishing all night long and caught nothing. That's the failure. The Bible says that they had given up on the day's attempt to catch fish because they were frustrated. Frustrated because of their failure. Mm, I see myself all in it. And I ain't gotten the boat yet. Uh, 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 and then, then the Bible tells us later on that as Simon Peter would talk to Jesus, the Bible says there's fear. There's fear. So, so, so can we speak to uh, our failures? Can we speak to our frustration? Can we speak to our fear? And let those things know, yeah, you may have me empty, but I'm leaving full. I ain't got any yet, but, but, but is there anybody that can say, look, I may not look like I have failure, but I failed. Is there anybody that can say, I may not, not, may not look like I'm frustrated, but I'm so tired of being tired and sick and tired to where I'm fed up and I don't want to deal with it no more. And then there's fear. You may not look like you're afraid, but if God asks you to follow him, Would you really? If God asks you to forsake all, would you really? God has not given us spirit of fear. Stay woke. So we see in the text that there's there's two boats, two boats that have given up. Two boats that have stopped being effective and productive in their vocation. Two boats that went out and failed. Now they are empty. Two boats. But God chose, chooses one. Jesus chooses one out of the two. Now this ain't no game of eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a ticket by his toe. If he holler, let him go. Any, meeny, miny, mo. My mama uh, told me to pick the best one. This ain't that game. 
God has a reason in him choosing the boat that he chooses, that of Simon Peter and the other disciples, she tickled pink, <laughs> and the other disciples, he chooses to get into an empty boat, but he makes it full when he gets on. Y'all told me y'all weren't going to do me that. But y'all tracking what I'm putting down. The moment Jesus gets on board, God, that which was empty becomes full. It ain't about the fish. I don't want you to follow the fish. It ain't about the fish. It's about who's on board. <laughs> and, and, and I want to know, I want to know this morning, can you communicate your choice to God this morning by saying, God, I'm empty this morning. God, I'm frustrated this morning. God, I'm tired of my failures, my fears, and those things overcoming me. But God, I know when you get on board, those things which are, that are not of you has to get off because you just got on. God, I want my joy back. I'm empty of my peace. I'm empty of my happiness. I'm empty of hearing your voice. God, as long as you get on board, I know there's fullness. The Bible says, in him there's fullness of joy. I wish I had somebody in here who loved the word of God. That in him there's the fullness of joy. I'm leaving full today, baby. Here it is, here it is. I communicate my choice that it's all right for him to get on board. But notice, he chooses to get in before they allow him to, before they ask him to, before they invite him to, he chooses to get on board. Watch this, watch this. But, but, but they, they, they didn't make the choice. Jesus made the choice. But the choice that he makes uh, causes them to make a choice. I want y'all to see it. The choice that he makes causes them to make a choice. I need, I need y'all to be with me. I need y'all to be with me. The choice that he makes, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I'll give you something. I'll do something that, that is, is not uh, known for preachers to do. I'll give you my clothes before we even get there. So we're going to close in Romans 5 and 8. Uh, uh, while we were yet <laughs> sinners, Christ died for us. Somebody said, that's my benediction right there. I'm ready to go. Because of the choice that he makes, it gives them the ability to make a choice. Are you with me? To understand the choice that they've made this morning, uh, we have to understand the context. To understand their choice, we have to move backwards as they're attempting to go forward and follow Jesus. Watch this, watch this. If you, if, you, if you watch people in their movements, as you watch young Tavian, follow me. Move backwards and see what caused him to make the choice. He heard me talking. He heard my request. It was up to him whether he would be obedient to the words and to the request. So, so whenever you watch somebody make a choice, and, and you be like, boy, that show is crazy. That show is dumb. That show is stupid. You better take inventory of what caused them to make the choice. You might want to uh, go backwards in their, in their decision making before you go forward in judgment. Ah, why, watch it. Y'all with me? Because the next, the next choice that they're going to be presented with is as Jesus is on board. That's where I'm at, right? Jesus is on board. I want you to move to the text with me. Jesus is on board, and he tells them to launch out. Now, remember, remember, why do they make the choice to go out? Huh. The Bible says, now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep. And let down your nets for a draught. 
Give me my first point. Give me my first point. <laughs> first point is this. Little choices. And I've been praying about this. I've been praying that, that the complex would be made simple. I've been praying that, that, that the simple things would not be hard for us this morning. Amen? Little choices help us make big choices. That's the best way I could put it for you, Sister Cat. Little choices help us make big choices. Watch this. Watch this. The Bible said, I left you in verse 4, but, but, but watch it. Watch, watch this. The Bible says in verse 5, in verse five uh, it, it says, and Simon answered. Remember, Jesus said, launch out into the deep <laughs> for a drought. So, so, so what he's saying is, launch out so you can catch a whole, a whole lot. I want you to go past where you were. Past where you have been so you can catch something. Now, now, now that's a little choice, but that little choice is going to make a big difference. Mm -hmm. That little choice is going to ultimately help them make the big choice to follow. Am I with you? I don't want to set you up. I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't, want, to, I don't want to try to play games or, or give you any gimmicks. A little choice helps them make the big choice. The big choice was to forsake everything, to give up on what they knew, and follow him. Y'all with me? Watch it. So, so, so small choices of obedience become huge choices of opportunity. I'll say that again. Small choices of obedience become huge choices of opportunity. We want God to do big things, but you don't want to do nothing for him. We want God to perform big miracles, but we don't even want to get up and move in the direction of the miracle. Oh, I wish I had a church here. You look at all of the options. You look at all of the varieties. You look at all of the different things that's afforded or that's there for you, but we can't even move in the direction of the miracle. Little choices, say it with me. Help me make big choices. Say it with me. Small choices of obedience become huge choices of opportunity. Watch this. The smallest choices can change your life forever. It wasn't nothing but a little joint. Hmm. Little joint turned into a big addiction. It wasn't nothing but $5 I played. $5 turned into a gambling problem. One nothing but a little sip, little taste. Now we're struggling with alcoholism. Oh, it nothing but it was only one time I called. One time I hit the DM. Now we're struggling with adultery. Oh, it was only one time I looked at it on my phone. Uh oh. Now we're struggling with pornography. Oh my Lord. Oh, it wasn't nothing but one lie. Now we can't stop lying. Oh, it, it wasn't nothing but one gossip, one rumor. Now every time you come there, oh, here come the rumor mill. Small choices can change our lives forever. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But I know it's the truth. If you look at your life, and you look at where you are, it all was about a small choice. Come on now. I didn't have to steal. I didn't have to lie. I didn't have to do wrong. But it started with a small choice. Now it has changed your life forever. Watch this. Watch this. Luke, 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 Luke 10, Luke 16 and 10. I'm going to get there. But, but I want to ask you this. I want to ask you this. Can we do little things different? Can we do little things different? Watch it, watch it. Because it's the little things that God is watching. Luke 16 and 10 says, He that is faithful in that which is least. <laughs> it's the little things. It's the little things. He that is faithful in which is the least is faithful also. Oh, I'm talking. 
See, see, if you do the little things different, when you get to the big things, you say, oh, that ain't nothing but a, a little thing. When, when you get to the hard stuff, you say, oh, no, that ain't, that ain't hard. I've done that before. I know sacrifice. I know dedication. I know faithfulness. I know commitment. I know devotion. That is nothing hard to me. It says, and he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. So my question is, can we do the small things, Stacy? different? The little thing. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the, thing, is the evidence of things not seen. Faith, all, all you need is just a little grain the size of a... Can, can, can we start off with the little thing? And be faithful, and that faithfulness turns into something big, and now we can speak to the mountain. I can't play with it long. Huh, come on, point, 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 point two is, point two is this. Point two is, is make positive choices after negative results. <laughs> every, watch, every big choice people see you making started with little choices that's invincible. They don't, they don't, you know, they don't know why you are so bold and so bodacious and have the tenacity that you have when God says move you like that. When God says do you like that. When God says trust, it's like that. You know why? It was something invincible, something that they couldn't see. It's your faith that moves you into the big things of God. I wish I had a witness. So, so people wonder, man, how you made that choice to step out and go into a field that you're not skilled for, qualified for, certified for, didn't graduate in? How you move into that? Faith. How, how you stepped off? And went, went into something or started something that you don't know how the end was going to come out. Faith. Wow. He tells them to launch out into the deep. Uh, Master, we've been toiling all night long. Master, we caught nothing. No, launch out into the deep. The choice is invincible. They got on the boat and we don't see them getting in the boat. Hmm. They gathered all their gear, and we ain't see them gathering their gear. They, they are going to forsake everything and follow him, and we don't even see where it started or how it started. Wow. Point, point two. Point two is this, is, is, is make positive choices after negative results. It, they didn't start off, Sister Smith, to follow Jesus. They started off, Liz, to catch fish. It wasn't about him. It was about fish. Oh, I want y'all to see it. They did not get in the boat, launch out into the deep to follow him. It was about the fish. Somebody say it was about the fish. But Jesus had something else in mind. Positive choices after negative results. Can you go back at it after you failed? Uh-oh. Can you go back into it with frustration? Can I say it how I really want to say it? Can you go back into it knowing the same, if not worse, may be the outcome? Mm. Let that ponder. Let that sit and marinate for a second. Yeah, Lord, I'll follow you. Really? If I don't know... How the outcome is going to, how it's going to turn out. If I don't know what the end is going to be, I may go in tall, not for one night, I may go in tall for 40 nights and still come up with goose eggs. Still come up with nothing. Will you still follow reverend? Will you still follow deacon? Will you still follow deaconess? Will you still follow choir member? Oh, I ain't getting nothing from this. There's nothing for me. 
Will you still follow? Remember? Will you still go when you get nothing? Oh, Lord. See, it was about fish for them. But it was about relationship for him. Mm. Moving on, moving on. Oh, Lord Jesus. Yeah, I'm moving on. Watch this, watch this. Jeremiah 10 and 23. Jeremiah 10 and 23 says this. Oh, Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. What that's simply saying, Minister Sullivan, is uh, it's simply man's duty to walk in the ways and the assignments that God has for him. It ain't up to you. It's not, it's, not, it's, not your, it's not your way. It's not your will. It's up to God. It's God's duty. But all you have to do is follow. Am I right? <laughs> Watch this. I fail. I'm frustrated, and I'm scared. You know what your covering is going to be? Grace. Uh, what, what, what their covering was, was grace. You know what grace is? Another chance. See, y'all told me y'all weren't going to do me this. I said, you know what grace was? Another chance. Grace, grace is their power to cover their mistakes. Grace is the power to cover their failures. Anybody ever made a mistake? You know what covered you? Grace. Luther Barnes said it was God's grace. He's the reason why I made it this far. It was God's grace. Watch this, watch this. But grace is also the power to change your choices while you have the chance. It's the ability to try something different. So, so, so when, we, when we obey God, it breaks the flow of frustration. When we obey God, it breaks, it breaks the flow of failure. When we obey God, when we obey God, it stops fear right in its track. Because when you obey God, you say, well, if God be for me, where y'all at? Where y'all at? If God be for me, who can be against me? So, so watch this. Watch this. Can we drop something that brought us the defeat? Can we drop something and brought us the failure? Can we drop the things that brought us the, 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 the frustration and the fear? And can we pick up something new? Watch this, watch this, point three, point three, point three years. God's choice doesn't default to your chaos. Oh, my Lord. Verses, verses 7 through, through 11, the Bible says, after we look at, after verse 6 says, and when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fish. They caught a bunch of fish, y'all, to where their nets begin to break. And they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship that they should come and help them and they came and filled both ships. Didn't they just finish failing? But now their, their failure is gone. Their failure is done away with. Their, their, their frustration has changed and has turned and now they have a motivation. Come on. Come on, come on. I, I dare you to make a choice. I dare you to make the choice and come home, help us catch some of these fish. Remember, for them it was about fish, but, but for God it was about relationship. I told you, I told you, God's choice doesn't default to your chaos. Where the people at that raise their hands about their failures and their mistakes, their setbacks and their shortcomings. Okay, you don't want to raise your hand? The Bible says, for we all have sinned. Romans 3, and, and come short of the glory of God. So you ain't got to raise your hand. The Bible makes you raise your hand. Watch this. Watch this. We all have failures. We all have faults. We all have shortcomings. We all miss the mark of God. But God's choice does not default to us missing the mark. 
Oh, you got chaos in your life? God still called you. You, you, you got failure, you got frustration, you got fear, God still called you. Can I give you a Bible? Can I give you a Bible? Jeremiah, 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 uh, uh, throw it up. Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Can I just stop right there, Maurice, and toot my horn? <laughs> Can I just blow my horn just a little bit? Be before I made a mistake, he formed me. Be before that was an attempt or that was an opportunity to mess up, God said, I called you. Before my mama and my daddy hooked up and all my chaos and all my mess comes into play, God called me. And if he called me, he called you too. I gave the Bible study class uh, a word the other night. Uh, 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 for we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are made in the image of him. Right? The Bible says marvelous are the works of his hands. He chose you, Chris, despite how much chaos you got. And I'll be your pew partner and I'll shout with you because they'll look and say, Chris got chaos? Don't let them look at you. We all got chaos. Yeah. But guess what? Our chaos does not default to God's choice. Look at it. He says, before thou camest forth out of the wound, I sanctified you. Yeah, that sanctification does not default to you messing up. That sanctification does not default to you having a problem. That sanctification does not default to you missing the mark. He said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, before you came out, I sanctified thee, I ordained thee a prophet. Give it to me unto the nation. Peter, oh God, you're my help. Peter, here we go. Y'all woke? Peter, others to the Lord. After they catch all these fish, I wish I had a witness. Verse 8 says that when Peter saw it, he fell down hmm, at Jesus' knees, saying, depart from me. For I am a sinful man. Oh, Lord. Lee, come here. Come here, come here. One, one of the Leroy's. Come here, come here. Come here. Yeah, I want you. Come here. He says, he says, depart from me. I ain't going to push you because I don't want you to fall, all right? Come a little closer because I don't want you to. He, matter of fact, instead of me push you, you push me. He don't want, he don't want to do it. He, say, he literally says, get away from me. Leave me, for I am a sinful man. But I told you, God's choice doesn't default to your chaos. He's, he, 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 he go, he's going to tell him, forsake all. Put down your sin and follow me. Y'all see what I'm doing, huh? I'm getting closer. And the whole time he was doing what? Pushing me away. Push me away one more time. He said, depart, get away. But the whole time we pushing him away, his choice is that I get close. I get close. I get close. I got my boost. I just want you to know. All right. He's saying, though you want me away, my choice is that I'm getting closer. You may be seated, brother. Bless you. Thank you. How many times we push ourselves away? Because we think we're not worthy. That's what's going on here. Because we think we, we, we don't deserve it. And the whole time God is saying, no, my choice is that you would draw near. You would come close. You would get close to me. You would forsake everything and follow me. I ain't worried about your sin. I ain't worried about your shortcoming, Peter. I want you to follow me. Y'all see what Peter does? He falls to his knees. He says, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. For he was astonished at all that were with him at the draught of fishes which they had taken. I told you, it was about the fish for them. It wasn't about the relationship. 
I'm closing, but I got to talk about Peter. Put me there, brother-in-law. Peter falls down and says, get away. Jesus is on board Peter's ship. Jesus shows them that when you're obedient to me in the little things, I'll do big things for you and your people. He gets on the ship with Peter, Sister McKinney, and 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 in John 1 and 42, I'm reminded that he calls Peter a rock. He says, I change your name from Simon Peter to Petros, which means rock. He's trying to show him that despite your chaos, despite all that you are, you're still my choice. It's Peter, y'all, who, 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 who he gets on board, but it's not just Peter. It's the 11 disciples. Peter is going to ultimately, Sister Basile, become one of the three that's in the inner circle. Peter, James, and John. It's Peter, y'all, who will eventually see Jesus in the dead of night walking on water it's Peter who said get away from me for I'm a sinful man but it's going to be Peter that's going to say if it's you Lord bid me bid me to come to you Peter gets out of the boat walks on water to Jesus. It's Peter, y'all, who is going to preach in the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost. And 3,000, somebody say it's Peter, y'all, 3,000 souls were saved. It's Peter, y'all, who is going to ultimately be the first apostle of the church. It's Peter, y'all, who wrote 1 Peter. It's Peter, y'all, who wrote 2 Peter. It's Peter. Got to slow it down. Got to slow it down. But it's Pete who liked to cuss every now and again. It's, it's Pete who carried knives. And if you get too close to his Jesus, he'll cut your ear off. It's Peter who after Jesus tells, you're going to deny me three times before the cock crows. Who, who, who is Jesus? Who is Je I don't know that Jesus. Yeah, you was the one that was walking to him on water. I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah, you're the one that he said he would change your name. I don't know who you're talking about. You, you're the one that, that, that's going to ultimately preach on the day of Pentecost. 3,000 people will give their lives at the sermon of Jesus saves. I don't know that Jesus that you're talking about. It was Peter who denied, who cut who cussed? Sounds like us, huh? But don't forget the first Peter that I talked about. Because in spite of that, Sister Pat, he was still God's choice. In spite of the chaos. In spite of missing the mark. He was still God's man. You don't get up in the morning to fail. And in your failures, can I tell you, God still loves you. God still chooses you. 
He still decides to bless you. He still decides to make a way for you. He still decides to do a miracles, signs, and wonders in you and through you. Peter. <laughs> Peter. Peter. Can I tell you what I see? I see a whole bunch of Peters. We all have sinned and fallen short of his glory. But thanks be to God. Our chaos does not default. And God don't stay. He's still my child. God doesn't say, She's still mine. Watch this. I gave it to you. I gave you Romans 5, 5 and 8. Even though huh, it seems like we choose Jesus, the fact of the matter is that he chose us. But God commanded in his love towards Watch him communicate his choice. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I'm ready to ride. But he's asking us to lay something down. He's asking us, Zion, to forsake all and follow him. I closed the book, but I got to tell you, he asked us to lay it down because he laid it down. Can I tell you, the Bible said, for while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He laid his life down so we could pick up a life in him. Oh, I got to give it to you. I got to give it to you. Peter denied him and betrayed him. Turned him over to the soldiers arrested him carried him from judgment hall to judgment hall bible said that they found no fault in him Pilate said what do you have me to do with him i can't find any fault in him they turned him over to the soldiers for crucifixion put a cross on his shoulders he made the choice to carry i feel good an old rugged cross he never said a mumbling word he rocked he will he stumbled but he carried that cross to calvary the bible says they hung him high Stretch him wide. He bowed his head. And then he died. That's not how the story ends. Three days later, he got to communicate his choice. Three days later, he rose. He rose. He got up because he laid down his life. Will you, will you lay it all down? Will you forsake all and follow him? Will you communicate this morning? Jesus is my choice. The one that died for my sins and your sins is my choice. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, though none go with me. I still will follow with trouble in my life. I'm still going to follow being talked about 
I'm still going to follow. Being mistreated, I'm still going to follow. Being misunderstood, I'm still going to follow. Sickness, calamity, trouble, hurt, agony, defeat, even death, I still, I still, oh, I feel it, I still, I still have decided to follow. Hey, to follow him. You ain't got to go with me. I'm a follower. You can talk about me as much as you please. It look crazy to you, but it pleases my God. It look dumb to you, but it pleases my God. The Bible says he'll take the foolishness of this world to confound the wise. I've decided, I've decided to follow, follow Jesus. He's my choice. I said, he's my choice. He's my choice. And I communicate, communicate that. Communicate that to him, Sister Betty. He's my choice. When there's so many other options, so many other ways to go, so many chances to do him or to do you, he's the choice that I make. Choose you this day, life or death. What's your choice? Those of the church open. What's your choice? What's your choice? Will you make Jesus? Will you make him your choice? Will you, I, I, I'm not playing. I'm not playing. I'm not playing. While you have chance, will you make Jesus your choice? What I, what I will tell you is about my choice he's the best thing <laughs> I don't know about you eh? I don't know about you but he's the best thing that ever happened to me will you make him Lord of your life if you've never if you've never accepted him as your Lord and Savior will you make Jesus your choice today look like we got one or two coming but, but how many know, how many know, how many know there's still room? How many know there's still room? Billions have come, but there's still room. Still room at the cross. If you desire to make Jesus your life, there's many ways, there's many ways through water baptism, through publicly professing your faith in him, that he's Lord of your life. That's one way. Another way is if you're in a backslidden condition, out of fellowship. Remember, it wasn't about the fellowship. It was about the fish. It's about the fish. And, then, and many, many follow, many follow because of what God can do for them. But God wants, God wants you to make the choice not about what he can do, but about what he has done. Some 2,000 years ago, Jesus gave his life to redeem us from sin. The Bible said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Will you accept that gift this morning? Will you accept that gift? About salvation, about salvation, if you have never accepted him as your Lord, now is your time. About going further in a relationship, if you're in a backslidden condition, now is the time that you for you to rededicate, recommit. And if things are well in your life, if things are good in your life, and you're looking, you're just simply searching for a place to worship, simply searching for a place to call home, 
that strengthens your relationship. That keeps you on a steady walk. That keeps you following him. We offer salvation, rededication, and we offer a place for you to worship. Is there another? Is there another? God bless you. God bless you. Come here, my babies. Come here, come here. Come here. Amen. Amen. Just turn around so they can see y'all. Amen. Now, we have before us very quickly, very quickly, quickly, because they may be nervous. Y'all show them some love. Amen. Amen. We have Bristol. And this, this is Briley, right? Yeah, look at Briley, y'all. Done grew up. Amen. Both of these young, young souls have uttered the words, I believe in God. I believe in the Son of God who is Jesus Christ. And I believe that Jesus died for my sin. They both uttered the words, I want to be baptized. Now what we know is the little choice that they make today the, 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 the other little choice that they make when they go down in water, when they go down to be immersed, is going to change their life forever and ever. Until eternity, little choices give big opportunity. Can we praise God for these? Amen. Who made the choice? Y'all. Y'all, y'all can go back to your mamas. Amen. So, so, uh, Stacy, who the other one for? Oh, all right. That's her too. All right. She grew up too. All right, all right. So, we will, uh, Bianca. We will, we will talk immediately after service about baptizing them. We'll set a date, sisters and brothers. We'll set a date and we'll baptize them, and we will, we will. Help them in their choice. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 All right. All right. We 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 uh had we had a a mix up in our communion shipment. Uh, UPS uh, held up our package. Um, but how many know God always has a ram? Amen. He always has a ram. We thank, we thank our fellow brother, Pastor Julian, for bailing us out. Now, now I know those cups are a little different. I think the bread is at the bottom and the juice is at the top. But hey, praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We are now about to commune with our God. We are now about to go into that act, which is called communion. We, we don't reenact it, but what we do is we do it as often in remembrance of him. Amen? It's not reenacting, it's remembering. The Bible says on the night that Jesus was turned over to his accusers by betrayer of those that was in his circle, the Bible says that he takes first the bread. He gives them clear instructions of what it is. He says, this is my body, which is going to be broken for you. He says, often as you eat of this bread, do it in remembrance of me. The Bible says he lifted it, broke it, gave thanks, and they ate. Let us eat. Clear and concise, Jesus says to them, after he gave thanks, he explains to them just what this cup is. He says, this, this cup is the New Testament of my blood, the new covenant of my blood. 
It says, as often as you drink from this cup again, as often as you drink from this cup, you do show forth my death until I come again. Let us drink. Hallelujah. Thank God for the word. Say we thank God for the word. Amen, amen, amen. Thank God for Bristol and Briley. Two siblings, two siblings, two siblings. Amen. Last week, I don't, I don't know if y'all caught the importance of what happened last week. I uttered, I uttered from that liquid grave that Caden and Kennedy went, they came into this life together. They exited the life that they once knew before Christ and they entered into a new life together with Christ. Amen. Bristol and Briley, y'all didn't come into this world at the same time, but y'all going into a new world at the same time. Amen. Y'all made a good choice. Y'all made, y'all made the best choice that you could ever make. And that's giving Jesus charge of your life. Amen. Amen. We thank God for them. We thank God for them. We, we are going to remind ourselves of a few things. We're going to remind ourselves of a few things. I want to, want to remind ourselves of our giving, of our giving, of our giving. Let's make the choice. Let's make the choice not to rob God. I'm not trying to get anything from you. I'm trying to get something to you. Amen. Make, make the choice. Make the choice. Make the choice today to, to be devoted, to be dedicated. The Bible says to be faithful, to be faithful in your giving. Let's make the choice to be faithful. So there's many ways to give. We have ways for you to give in person and for you to give virtually. Our first way is by our envelope system. First way is by our envelope system. Please completely fill out the envelope. Fill in all the blanks that apply to your tithe. Fill out all the blanks that apply to your giving. Please fill in all the blanks. Amen. And once you've done that, if you will simply deposit them into the gold boxes, the gold receptacles that are at the back door. If you're going to mail your tithe in, the address is 808 St. Patrick Street, Donaldsonville, Louisiana, zip code 70346. If you want to give virtually, we have a virtual platform for you to use. We have an app that we utilize called Givelify. If you would download it, if you haven't, download it to your phone, to your electronic device. Simply tap and give and you're done. Simply tap and give and you are done. People are doing that now. I see people have their phones out utilizing it now. Thank you for making a choice to be faithful. Thank you for making a choice to be faithful. I want to remind you of our vision. I want to remind you of our vision. We have a threefold vision. We have a threefold vision. We are a progressive church. The Bible says when the word went forth, the disciples multiplied. But not only did they multiply, they went forth in progressing. We are the only thing that God is coming back for. He said that he's coming back for his bride, the church. And we want to be found in better state than we were in when he left. Amen. We want to be without stain, without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. Amen. The Bible says we proclaim the gospel everywhere we go. We tell everyone, we tell everyone that there is a reality in serving a true and living Savior. And then, then, as Matthew 6 and 33 says, we seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things shall be added unto you. We run with that vision, amen? We support that vision, and we ultimately want it to be fulfilled. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. I want to I wanna say, wanna say thank you. I, I didn't have an opportunity to do it last week because we were, we were baptizing and uh, ready to get out of that water. But just want to thank everyone that participated last week in the pop-up shop. 
Uh, thank everyone that participated. It was a blessing. Thanks, Sister Centrell Gardner, for putting that on. Uh, just, just newly becoming a part of Mount Zion, wanting to do something for her church. And I find that to be a blessing. Amen? So I urge you, I urge you. I, I, matter of fact, I challenge you. I challenge you. To, 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 to make a small choice, to make a small choice and do something, do something great for your church, amen? Do something great for, for the place where you grow. Do something great for the place where you gather, amen? Do something great, do something great. Now your thing may be one thing and your thing may be another, but in it be great. Challenge you to greatness, Amen? Uh, this week, this week, this Wednesday, this Wednesday, uh, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a yield. I'm a yield. I'm going to yield. Sister Smith, you got something to say? Come on, come on, come on, Sister Smith. That's a good choice. He came right here by me. Thank you. I need you. <laughs> I'm going to get back to that then. Um, <laughs> this Wednesday, we have the Thanksgiving dinner giveaway. Um, we'll be here at the church from 1030 until they're gone. And we've decided this year that we'll only do 350 plates. Um, I want to thank everybody who volunteered and involuntary cook or will cook for us. I have the pans in the back for the people that I told that I'll have pans and stuff like that. They're back here in the shower, so we, you can get them before you leave. Um, and if you uh, decided to bring something or prepared any type of food, we're asking if y'all could get it to the church by no later than 8 o'clock on Wednesday morning. Somebody will be here. We'll all be here um, to get that food already prepared. And then we have help to box it up. All we're doing is boxing it up and giving it by the time 1030 comes. So if anybody still want to volunteer to help, we're always willing to take somebody. We do have a lot of volunteers as well, so I just wanted to um, thank everybody for that. And then we're looking for a good time that day. That's always a, a joyous time to me to like give back to the community and just give uh, back to people. I do need help from maybe a few ladies. Our annex has not been used in quite a while. We need to, it's not in bad shape because there was a general COVID cleaning done uh, prior to us coming back into worship. Uh, but we do need to do just, just a, 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 a kind of like a little basic cleanup. So if I can get some ladies and uh, maybe some men to kind of come out on tomorrow be here at 4 o'clock tomorrow at 4. Matter of fact, let's make it 3.30. Tomorrow at 3.30 to just kind of tidy up our annex, tidy up uh, the building that's there so we can uh, so, so we can be cleaned up so that the world can see. Alright? So if you need your help in that also. decided <laughs> to celebrate you on today, you know, as I continue to move. Um, we see everything you go through, the long, late nights, you know, praying and studying, fasting, everything. We see you. And we, as a church, are grateful. So, we just 
just wanted to take one minute, because I know you read it, and these people got to go and get out of here. But they are they okay to give us about five minutes. <laughs> For you, Pastor. We want to say that we love you, we appreciate you. Um, keep doing what you're doing, we keep following God. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear pastor, happy birthday to you. Put, put a little anointing on that girl and say happy birthday dear Randy. Happy birthday yeah, to there you, you. Go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Hey, Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank y'all. So, if you don't mind, at this time, I just want to say a prayer right quick, praying for our pastor, our leader. Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now. We thank you for the anointing that you have placed in our pastor's life. We thank you that he listened when you called his name to come and lead us here in Mount Zion. We pray, Lord, that you continue to strengthen him, to give him wisdom, crown his head with only your wisdom, your knowledge, so he can lead us, Lord, and send us out there, and we know what we should do when we go. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done in his life, in our lives. We thank you, Father, that in this time, he will know who he is will also grow as you continue to lead us. Lord, we just give you all praise, all glory, and honor. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I ain't gonna cut up. I, know, I, ain't gonna cut up. I had to look over at Mr. Leroy because he said when I get the mic, I don't know how to quit. Yeah. <laughs> so, anybody who got anything wanted to present to Pastor because our God bless you all for your efforts of love, appreciation, and honor on today. Now, y'all know my birthday is really Saturday, right? <laughs> 20, all right, all right. So, so um, I know where this came from. 
I know what that text mess that text message was about. <laughs> yeah, y'all think y'all slick. Y'all think y'all slick. All right, praise God, praise God. Um, it's truly an honor. It's truly an honor to be honored. Amen. Uh, I was taught was taught you to serve God, give God my best, and that's all I'm that's all I'm trying to do. That's all I'm trying to do. Amen. So I pray that that he would uh, keep his hand upon me. And uh, sometimes I don't feel like I'm 41. Uh, you know, old people used to say, well, you're going to feel it when you get old. <laughs> uh, I feel it. I feel it. But I also feel my health. I also feel my strength when I need it the most. God always prevails. He always prevails. So I'm grateful. Uh, I'm not going to hold you any longer. Thank you to everybody that gave something or have covered me in prayer. Uh, that, that really means the most. That really means the most. Um, so God bless you all. Amen. All right, all right. It's time to, it's time to. Okay, there's some, there's some sweets. Make the right choice. Make the right choice. Y'all gonna be eating all them sweets and all that stuff this week. Candy, pies, cookies, cakes. Make the right choices. Choose life. And not death. Choose dieting. Amen. All right. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Let us stand. Let us stand. Let us stand. Minister Sullivan's daughter, uh, Latanya, she says all the time, she say, uh, man, you miss your calling. Uh, I think you was called to be a comedian and not a... <laughs> See, some of y'all don't know that side of me. I like to have fun. Amen. I like to have fun. I said, I like to have fun. All right, all right. We thank, we thank God for, for everything that has been said or done in this service. I pray, pray that whatever happened, whatever transpired in this time that we've gathered together, I pray that you would be able to clearly communicate your choice. Clearly be able to communicate your choice. Jesus will I follow. No turning back. None go with me. I still will follow. May God's peace, may his richest blessings, may his grace, may his mercy, may his favor be upon his people now. May the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit go with you all. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed week in the Lord. I love you. I love you.